morning, this is the Hell's Canyon Wilderness area, and I'm going to break here to talk some anime. Many, many, aka Labyrinth Tales. Many, many, or Labyrinth Tales was a 1986 anime theatrical movie, a compilation of three short anime stories, each written and directed by a different then-upcoming anime talent. When it was released in the U.S. by ADV Films, it picked up yet a third title, Neo Tokyo. Labyrinth is both the first and last story of the triptych. It provides the bracketing story that introduces the other two tales. A little girl is chasing her cat. Like Alice chasing the white rabbit, she follows the cat into her grandfather's clock and into a fantastic world hidden within. Wandering through that world, she meets many strange critters before finally bumping into a clown who will usher into a tent and present the other two stories of the set. The art for Labyrinth is playfully abstract. It's a fantasy world that features bright, bold colors. There's no dialogue in this world of the rabbit hole, just pantomime. The Labyrinth segment is directed by Rintaro, who was then the established director of the trio, having already helmed such series as Space Pirate Captain Harlock, plus a Katie of My Youth, Dagger of Kamui, and Armageddon movies. The artwork here is more in his Kamui style than his more direct approach in Captain Harlock. There isn't much of a plot to the Labyrinth segment. It really just serves to introduce the other two stories of this compilation in a playful way. <laughs> the second segment is entitled Running Man. This is a sci-fi story with some ghostly overtones. In the future, auto races link the driver's brain directly with their cars, expanding the driver's senses and allowing steering and speed to be controlled instinctively. The champion racer is Zach Hugh, a man who's probably been racing for way too long. The proud champion just can't stand to lose, no matter what kind of punishment that inflicts on his mind and his body, nor is he going to admit the toll all these races have already taken on his body. When the starting gun sounds and the crowd roars, he once again answers the call with teeth gritting determination. And, it seems, he's really chasing something more than just the cars circling the track, something else that's just a little bit further on. The artwork here is very dark, brooding in detail, the sharp contrast to the first segment style. It's also violent, intentionally ugly, and a bit moody. Again, dialogue is minimal. What little there is is provided by a deep baritone of a reporter who's doing a story on Zach Hugh. Running Man is written and directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, who worked with Rintaro on Armageddon the previous year. He'd previously directed the Lensman TV series, and he'd go on to direct Wicked City, Vampire Hunter D, and Ninja Scroll, as well as a host of other anime. Running Man is an interesting segment in it. It's moody and has a kind of ghost story to it. I really like the way it set a tone that provided a supernatural style ending to what is essentially a science fiction kind of story. The third segment of the film, Order to Cease Construction, is another sci-fi tale, but with a much lighter tone. A large Japanese corporation is putting some huge industrial development project out in the swamps and jungles of a tropical fictional country, Alawana. Because of the harsh conditions there, construction is almost fully automated, performed by robots. But due to a recent coup, Alawana's new government has canceled the contract. Salaryman Suyoga is dispatched to suck down the construction before it wastes any more of the company's money. The robotic crew isn't exactly what he was expecting to find. <laughs> Order to Cease Construction is an early work of Katsuhiro Toho, who also worked with Rintaro on Armageddon. This is the year before he directed his landmark anime movie, Akira. Order to Cease Construction is a fanciful, humorous tale of automation run amok, with a similar sensibility to Otomo's later Rujin Z, but funnier, I think, because it's shorter and more to the point. The poor hero valiantly flails away as he tries to rein in scentless but seemingly relentless technology. This is the only segment of the movie that has a significant amount of dialogue since both Sugioka and his boss and the robotic foreman all converse. 
The artwork is meticulous and detailed, with weird mechanical construction devices competing with tropical plants, often immersed in torrential rain and dripping with mud. The animation of all three parts of this movie were produced by Madhouse, each in the art style of their segment's director, but each is full and detailed, as a true theatrical film should be. I give Labyrinth Tales four stars. While the bracketing story isn't much beyond a visual appetizer, the other two stories are solid tales, one dark and brooding, and the other entertainingly light. All are expertly animated and all showcase young directors at the start of noteworthy careers in animation. It's well worth watching. I confess I've never watched ADV Films' Neo-Tokyo U.S. release version of this since I have my trusty old Laserdisc. ADV's disc has just been re-released. Thanks for listening.